the nature of the mind and the senses is to attach see the mind hates solitude and the senses hate separation the reason is the mind and the senses themselves are an extension of the primeval atman the atman when it starts to convolute itself in the uh, prakriti and uh, takes the form of uh, a potentiality of prana to sink into a five mahabhut uh, sharir or body it creates these manifestations uh, the first one is of course identity followed by buddhi or uh, intelligence followed by man or mind followed by uh, senses that's why the hierarchy indriyani pranunde paramana manasastu para buddheyo buddhe partastu sa lowest level is the indriya followed by the mind followed by the buddhi followed by the atman sa soul <coughs> so having known that that these are merely extensions of the atman that form in the creation when the unmanifest becomes manifest you understand what they are and you are now loaded with them for better or worse for better because you wanted to create experiences you wanted to experience the experiences and for worse because now you are going to get sinking deeper into it and there becomes lesser and lesser chance of you coming back to your original portion which is your parmatman position so you are sinking uh, deeper and deeper farther and farther away from your natural entity which is the parmatman so <clears throat> nature of the mind is to attach this attachment uh, should be considered in three stages the first stage is exposure introduction detection in this stage there is an observer the sense or there is an observer the mind which comes in contact with its complementary association entity and that is called the idea a thought a feeling for the mind similarly that is a uh, object of sensual gratification for the for the senses now being the imperfect observer it is very often loaded with identity it is loaded with uh shaping it it is loaded with the idea of giving it certain definition and then getting attached to that definition so that the observer and the observation cannot be distinguished let's take an example when we are eating a rasgulla or any sweet we like the taste of it now you will notice after eating one or two you have kind of become satiated like you are not enjoying the pleasure is not there but you continue to eat and the, at that point the observation of uh, or the sensation of taste has become inseparable from the tongue and that is why in the late stages you will overeat and this happens with any sense you overdo whatever is pleasurable even when it stops to be the pleasurable because the experience and the observer of the experience have become inseparable and hence they want to remain in contact with each other no matter what so <clears throat> knowing that there is initially in the three stages of attachment whether it is for the mind or the senses because the senses are uh, the children of the mind the five children of the mind are the senses and parent is the mind uh, and usually you will see that the parent controls the children but when the children become extremely uh, uh, extremely difficult then they start controlling the parent they start calling the shots and that is what we don't want we don't want the natural hierarchy in which they were established to go haywire because that will sink you deeper from the from the original uh, place where you came from uh, and that is what is going to cause more problems so first of all you know that senses should not control the mind the mind should control the senses and that is why the experiences of solitude 
सेल्फ रिमिनेशन दोज ध्यान मेडिटेशन आर हेल्पफुल बिकॉज then you can have the clarity of who is controlling who and where your life is going because if the senses start controlling the mind you might get the immediate pleasure from whatever you are doing but in the long term the mind is registering all those experiences and hence it is feeling like it is losing the war you might be uh, upping yourself in the battle once or twice but you are losing the war and that regret remorse will remain with you because it has been ingrained in your mind and you felt like how to be a loser you can write a beautiful book how to be a loser and that's what is disturbing to the mind because end of the day it is an observer so the nature of the mind is to attach the three stages of attachment happen the first stage is introduction detection in which uh, an idea comes to your mind you might not entertain it you might entertain it depending on how it makes you feel because the moiety of identity is there in which you for the time being think of yourself as the idea and try to see how it feels to be that idea and hence the introduction or detection of the idea by the mind or the sensation by the senses now depending on the kind of uh identity you have it will create either a raga which is a passion or a dvesh which is aversion if there is aversion then you will never go towards it and that is why aversions work so well in the material world to nati nati or no to this no to that so that you don't attach yourself to a lot of things lesser your attachments the better your existence the cleaner your consciousness the more closer you are to perfection of the parmatman so you use rag dvesh to determine what things you will attach yourself to and what yourself you will uh, remove yourself from but when you remove yourself the aversion part you are still susceptible to certain uh, uh, observations of a different kind because the nature of the mind is to attach and it's very hard for the mind to not attach you have the option of attaching to sattva rajas or tamas but you don't have the uh, option to go nirgun you can only go nirgun in the later stages where you have totally exhausted all these three pathways and hence when you come here you have to kind of uh, uh, in the blueprint in the world creation you have to be attaching to something that's why it is easier to uh, do bhakti yoga and sink yourself in the um, in the music of uh, praising the uh, supreme lord rather than doing a dhyana or meditation in silence for hours because it gives the senses some purpose it gives the senses some work and that is the way they can cleanse themselves the best so my friends the first was exposure introduction the second stage is repeated exposures this repeated exposures is what creates the word attachment uh, where you feel you are uh, uh, enjoying it it's happening again and again and it's good let's keep doing it so you are in the continuation phase yeah, that was the initiation phase of exposure now we are in the continuation phase of attachment now <clears throat> this is where things start getting muddy when you are in the continuation phase where the mind uh, entertains an idea or the uh, sense entertains a sensation slowly the observer which is the mind or the sense here becomes indistinguishable from the observed the experience uh, the sensation of taste the sensation of touch the sensation of smell sight hearing or the sensation or the uh, uh, perception of an idea thought feeling for the mind so all these things become indistinguishable from what was observing it so now the observer it becomes a stakeholder it has skin in the game so now it won't be able to register uh, unequivocally impartially perfectly what is observing because the identity has come into it and it has slowly moved from attachment to the third stage which is the stage of sinking uh, uh, in separation which is the state of absorption which is the stage of addiction so from exposure comes attachment from attachment comes as addiction but where it becomes addiction or the third stage where indistinguishable inseparable from the experience is the observer the mind from the idea the sense from the sensation there comes the idea of loss of identity of the initial uh, discrimination that we had and that is why buddhi or the intellect is said to be the delineating uh, intellect which helps to discriminate good and bad
because as a impartial observer you are able to assign a character to it whether it is a good thing or a bad thing whether it is evil or divine whether it is uh, uh progressive or regressive but once you are in having skill in the game and you are the game you are not able to create that distinction because you are not an impartial neutral observer anymore you have a stake in the hold so you are a stakeholder so that is the stage of addiction where there will be learned helplessness even when you have pangs of um, consciousness arise within you you are like no i am submitted to this thing i am uh, uh, totally in control of this thing and that's how you lose your control from from uh, entertaining an idea repeatedly that is why it is problematic to be doing things which seem very inane which seem very uh, ordinary but if they repeatedly are done whether good or bad things whether satvik or tamsik they will become your nature you are what you think you are what you do you are what you experience that that you cannot change at that point it's too late because that has become your nature and that is just like becoming like prakriti and that is why prakriti when it expands the consciousness will uh, will go down when the consciousness will expand the prakriti will uh, go down so there is a constant battle <clears throat> although they cannot live with each, without each other it's like a husband and wife there's constant power struggle going on uh, when the consciousness rises it is able to control the prakriti when the prakriti rises it is able to destroy the consciousness because if the consciousness is there it will control it so the only way prakriti can continue its madness the madness of creation and dissolution is by silencing the soul silencing the consciousness silencing the chitta parmatman portion so knowing that that uh, in the third stage they are inseparable indistinguishable then you start questioning who am i that is where this idea comes from who am i Uh, am i this body am i this mind am i this uh, uh, consciousness that is sleeping in deep sleep who am i and this will this delusion of ignorance of uh, a lack of perception of true identity or there is no identity does not arise when you are the perfect parmatman when you are the perfect observer only when there is the imperfection the virus of uh, uh, creating passion purpose pleasure uh, then you start questioning who am i because there is a rajasic state that question itself is a rajasic question uh, asking about the tamasic status quo why are things the way they are what is the purpose of life who am i because you have lost the ability to distinguish and delineate which was the initial uh, fire power of your buddhi or the intellect that was granted to you vinashakale viprit buddhi because you are so close to the destruction portion of the nature that uh, you your buddhi will be silenced so you cannot distinguish delineate that is why overdoses happen in opiate use that is why overdoses happen uh, from alcohol uh that is how people will end the status quo of whatever they were doing because you cannot end the prakriti will end it for us and that is how we go on to our next life next body based on the sanskaras we had created <coughs> so my friends uh to sum it up the nature of the mind is to attach just like an adhesive tape a duct tape it it has to attach to something now what it attaches to is up to us whether you attach itself to a brilliant idea because you had used the uh, primitive senses what are the primitive senses well, there is only one primitive sense actually that is the sense of hearing listening sound because sound is the connection from the unmanifest to the manifest uh, so that is why it's the unheard or the dumb breathing without a skin and that creates the immense influence on correction of this observer so you can use the power of sound whether through mantras or om or through chanting because that power is a corrective power towards the impurity of identity that helps to dissolve dissolute distinguish i'm sorry dissolve dissolute and destroy your existence so that is why you have to always uh, uh, fall back towards music to the power of sound because that will generate a lot of a uh, consciousness and return you to your initial primitive 
uh, state which is the undiluted parmatman that you are supposed to be so um that is uh, that that is the nature of the mind uh, uh, that we have to overcome and to overcome it we have to use the sense of sound because sound is the one thing which is very hard to quantify everything else in the mahabhuts if you think about the senses the sense of touch it has to touch a mahabhut the sense of smell it has to smell a mahabhut the sense of sight has to see a mahabhut but when sound comes there's nothing to there's nothing formed like in the five senses that are having an exposure to compared to the other four senses of sight smell uh, touch and taste so my friends that is why sound is very corrective when you're trying to correct something and inside you inform of an addiction that is sound now once you know that sound is corrective you try to use the power of sound to create sattvic experiences because the nature of mind is to attach it will attach no matter what you have to attach itself to sattvic experiences and the other thing to know is that if you don't take action if you don't use the power of uh, perception to understand that whatever you are attaching to is going to damage you you will keep reincarnating you will keep forming new bodies sometimes bodies which are uh, fulfilled with pain janmitu jaravyadi because you are entangling yourself with the experience and hence you are not a observer anymore so you become prakriti and prakriti in the end uh, will continue this madness and it will have pain but a lot of time it will not even know it has pain that is the beauty of prakriti that is the beauty of tamas actually people who are suffering don't know they are suffering you need to have some rajasic consciousness to you have need to have some motive of identity to know you are suffering otherwise even when you are suffering you don't know you are suffering and you are not having that much pain perception because pain at the end is an experience so that is why you'll see animals will have higher pain tolerance than humans because humans anything that has a lot of consciousness uh will have pain and ability to perceive the pain of course when it rises to a level where the consciousness is so supreme that it is able to totally cut it off then you are at the extreme other end where you'll not even experience pain but for the most part when you have consciousness you have pain and when your consciousness falls uh your pain perception can fall and your pleasure perception can rise now it will make you more addicted and keep doing what you are doing without questioning the status quo the tamasic nature of animals uh but it's not going to bring you back to the consciousness state where you have freedom an ability to uh experience do or not do things you want things on you're not in the blueprint of karma bandhan where you have to reincarnate automatically and you don't have a say in it you can never become a avatar if you keep um, in keep kept in the trap of karma bandhan that is why we try not to have experiences exposures are fine but once they become attachment it becomes dangerous because the second stage of attachment or repeated exposures with a predetermined predictable pathway of outcome in form of uh, what results it will create pleasure uh, is bad because in the end it leads to addiction or the sinking of the experience within the observer so that the experience and the observer cannot be distinguished anymore they become one and the same and hence you have become this body and then you question who am i because you don't understand whether you are the mahabhut portion the prakriti portion of the body or you are the consciousness residing in the body because now they have become one and the same indistinguishable you don't even remember how it felt to be without a body and hence you are like okay this is what is supposed to be let's keep the body let's think we are the body let's take care of the body let's keep immersing ourselves deeper and deeper in the sinking absorption third ultimate portion of the attachment which is the addiction and once you are addicted you have created samskaras or proclivities innate tendencies in your mind so that this is the norm and you have written the rules that this is how observer experience should always coexist there should not be any questioning of the experience there should not be any questioning of the presence of the consciousness already it was unmanifest now you have totally deleted it so there's only prakriti there's nothing else there to be that is the game of the maya or the delusion and that is how it confuses us to believe what we are not the mind, the body or the mind or the senses and that is why you have to understand that senses and mind are merely a representation of imperfect observation which is uh 
seeing the universe, experiencing the universe, and then thinking you are the universe. Whereas you are always the unmanifest moiety, what we call Atman, which has been fragmented or broken away from the Paramatman, floating in the world of the Prakriti and slowly sinking deeper and deeper into Prakriti. In a way, it becomes trapped, sequestered, so that it cannot return back to its abode, the Paramatman. And the Paramatman keeps observing it, no matter how far it goes, because that's the power of perfection, the perfect observation. It will keep noting down what the Atman is doing and hence granting it uh, the samskaras or the proclivities and hence granting it the karma bandhan, what it is supposed to do in its next life, in this life. Unless it breaks those shackles through the power of perception, through the power of consciousness, through the power of discrimination that it has provided to the mind, through the power of solitude, through the power of yagyadanantap, through the power of karma yoga, bhakti yoga, dhyan yoga. And those are the powers that will help you ascend and break the cycle of samskaras and karma bandhan to return to your abode. Paramatman, where you are free to go into Prakriti but not get trapped in the Prakriti as Karma Bandhan. And that is what we have to try to attain as we navigate the powers of the mind, which is like an adhesive tape. It has to stick to something. So let it stick to some sattvic ideas. Let it stick to some ideas of Yagyadanantap. Let it stick to Bhakti. Because its nature in the senses is to attach. Let it attach to the music, the divine music of uh, bhakti, chanting, mantras, because that will help to elevate us back to our abode, the Paramatman, where we belong. Jai Shri Ram.